Hello and welcome. My name is Allison Bream and I'm the CEO and founder of Virtual Corporate Wellness. Today, I want to talk to you about how to motivate your employees. There are many ways to go about it and you need to determine what works best for your company. So when you do, I have a few things you, can want, you might want to consider. Many businesses don't even realize how much employee turnover impacts their bottom line. And it takes on average anywhere from $4,000 to $14,000, depending on your industry, to replace a typical employee. That dollar range increases substantially when you're talking about executives and managers. So yikes, that's, it's not cheap to replace top talent. So we need to look at ways to motivate your employees so that they stick around and give you their best every single day. Before you begin, you wanna do a couple things. First, you need to evaluate your previous efforts for trying to motivate your employees. Find out what worked in the past and what didn't. Second, you need to understand what you are looking for as a result of this newfound motivation in your employees. Are you looking for improved morale? Are you looking for an increase in achieving business objectives? Are you looking for improved retention rates? Think about your goal and get clear. Finally, I recommend you survey your employees. I think it's important to get their feedback and to get them involved in the process from the very start. There is no guesswork here. We're trying to be strategic so you get the results you're looking for. And in order to do that, you can't do that when you're making assumptions. So survey your employees and get their feedback on what will motivate them. Next, I want to look at some ideas you can use to motivate your employees. This list was created for those who are on a budget, and that means some of these you're probably already doing to some degree, and may be no-brainers, but maybe you'll think about them now in a slightly different way, or ways that you can enhance and improve them. Ultimately, my goal here is to get you thinking so you can brainstorm different ideas and find out what's going to work best for your company, which is key. So the first one is clearly define your organization's vision, mission, and positive commitment to employee wellness. You want your staff to have an understanding of what they're getting behind and also how they're perceived. Chances are they probably already know your vision and your mission at a high level, but what's important here is to get across that their health and wellness is very important to you and will be part of your company's culture moving forward, if it isn't already. Another idea is to kick things off by sending out a company-wide survey to gauge the current level of your employee satisfaction and what motivates them. I kind of already covered this, but it's definitely something that I like to continue to remind clients because it is so imperative to get their feedback. You could get questions answered and find out what their interests might be, you know, would they like weekly chair massage services, ergonomic improvements, such as the option for a standing desk or sitting on an exercise ball, you know, would they want flexible work schedules, would they, you know, just get, get some ideas in and see what, you know, they gravitate toward. A lot of companies already do this, but another idea is to send a monthly staff newsletter that keeps employees informed about what's currently going on behind the scenes so they feel involved and included in the company that you know in your company and so that they can really kind of just get grounded in what you guys are doing as a whole lack of communication is the number one cause of dwindling motivation to stay involved in or care about your organization you know that you're working for so it's important to have ways to motivate them and to get them involved and have a clear understanding of what is going on. And this is really imperative, especially if you have a larger corporation with many departments and even different office locations. What I'd actually recommend, and a lot of people do newsletters as a standard email, which to be perfectly honest, if we're all honest with each other, is not something that I would say that employees typically prioritize in terms of their inbox. Usually it either gets deleted 
or it's something that is a, is a low, low, low priority for them to actually read. So probably by the time they actually get around reading it, it might be obsolete information. So another idea is to kind of shake things up and maybe even do a video format where you know you're interviewing a couple of individuals across your organization whether that's your ceo or executive team um, and and just make sure to have fun with it um, as well it's it's so easy for us to just give information and instead of just making it relatable in a way that gets us excited and motivated about you know the companies you know that we're all working for so maybe try that also make sure to show some personality you know you can a lot of people include staff news you know birthdays work anniversaries you know special acknowledgments and thanks are always great um, you can do a wellness tip or staff pet photos or have a humor section, whether that be a joke or, or just something, or even that could be, you know, the tone of the overall communication. Um, either way, it's really important to show some personality, um, you know, because otherwise it's just kind of another something to clog up our inboxes and it will most likely get deleted. Another idea is to create a wellness section on you know, your company intranet um, for employees to kind of check out where they can share health tips, recipes, and various information on, you know, maybe if you want to create kind of a lunch hour walking group or do book or DVD exchanges, just having a central location for employees to really kind of get involved um, is, is really key. And you can also, if, if that sounds overwhelming in terms of how am I going to come up with enough content to fill an intranet or have all these health tips? You can probably leverage a lot of resources from your insurance provider because a lot of times they have a portal that you can grab some information from and so that's a good place to start. Also um, another idea is you can partner with community organizations to offer health related products and services to employees and I really especially uh, think that really giving local businesses um, you, you know a, a chance is really great um, it, it's, it's great for any local vendors to kind of come in and get involved also a lot of companies are, are doing more around flexible schedules but it's really important to communicate the importance of your employees health and wellness and even that extends to their family as well so making them feel comfortable that, hey, you know, if they're sick or their kids are sick, you know, having that flexibility to either work from home um, so that they don't feel pressured to, you know, come to work sick and which could eventually, you know, get other people sick and, and it kind of, the cycle continues. Another idea is to create a company sports team and participate in various other adult leagues like kickball, soccer, volleyball um, in your local area. That's always um, a fun thing to do to kind of help motivate and build team uh, morale. You can also have managers allow for the option of standing or walking meetings. Um, this especially works for small group meetings um, from anywhere from two to four people. Um, it just it gets us up walking around um, a little bit more active. Um, so it's something to kind of just check out and maybe play around with. You can also invite instructors um, to come in and teach classes on a regular basis, you know, such as yoga, Pilates, boot camp, etc. You know, I, I would, if, if this is something of interest for your company, I've definitely, you know, in the survey ask, you know, what um, type of fitness instructor or class they would like to have come in so you're not forcing some of your employees to just do yoga you know so so kind of ask them what type of classes they would like to take um, to get their feedback first and foremost before you actually go and hire anyone another idea is to negotiate corporate discounts for health club memberships gym discounts um, for those who are employed at your organization this is kind of a standard one that most companies do but um, on the off chance that your company is not doing it, it could be something that you want, want to check out. Another idea is to hold staff fundraisers for local charities um, and, and various causes. Basically, this is it's a good opportunity to encourage your employees 
to volunteer and, and, and kind of get invested in the local community. Um, I have a, a, another video where I talk about your employee volunteer program. I think that that's something that's really important that a lot of employees don't really feel that they could take the time off um, and take advantage of. So, you know, get your leaders and executive team involved and, and make this a priority from the top down. Another idea to motivate your employees to ha is have a game or activity room where, you know, employees can take a break um, from meetings and phone calls, you know, play foosball, pool table, darts, you know, whatever works best for your employees and, and whatever they're kind of gravitating toward. You can also encourage potluck Fridays or something similar um, where employees can bring food and you know, just kind of socialize and eat together instead of everyone kind of going their separate ways at lunch. I mean, it's it's great for everyone to kind of have that break to get out of the office for lunch, but sometimes, um, you know, it'd be good, you know, just to kind of have that um, team building, that morale, that socialization, you know, throughout your organization. Uh, another idea is to have a suggestion box and encourage employees, you know, that they can make their opinions and, and concerns known, but doing so in a way that isn't confrontational. Um, just having this option um, sometimes, you know, helps um, people, you know, feel a little bit better about, you know, putting in suggestions for the organization. And, and it's really important to, you know, when you're reading these suggestions to potentially follow up, um, you know, on a, on a mass scale, you know, if you're, if you're starting to get the same sort of suggestion over and over again, and there's a reason why you can't implement it, whether it be, you know, budgetary reasons, or it might not be a direction that, you know, your organization is going right now, um, then it's important to address those. So people, uh, you know, know that you actually read them um, and are taking them under advisement. Um, so just, just remember to do that follow up. Uh, another idea is to promote professional development. Um, this is this is really key um, across the board, but you know when it comes to our health and wellness, there's a lot of different aspects. I mean, it's not just about you know if we eat right or if we exercise. There's a lot of elements into what you know creates health and wellness. You know, it, there's our emotional health, mental health, spiritual health, as well as the physical. So it's you can also um, encourage your employees to take advantage of you know, local professionals that, you know, might do life coaching or, you know, communication experts or nutritionists or motivational speakers just to kind of help them, you know, nurture all aspects of them as an individual. Also, just create more opportunity for the staff to feel heard. And, you know, meetings happen all the time uh, in, in various organizations and some organizations uh, it's all day every day and some of them um, actually probably the majority of the meetings you know could have been dealt with outside you know of everyone getting together um, you know but it, it's really important you know especially for a manager and those that they specifically manage to kind of have those one-on-one -on -one conversations where they are feeling like they're they're being heard and that their career goals are taken seriously on an individual level instead of having kind of that group group communication. And I know HR does this quite a bit, but you know, you want to encourage the use of all vacation days, you know, and because a lot of times, you know, there's so much going on and especially for some of the, the type A employees, I know I was one of them, you know, where you just kind of feel like you, you don't have time to take a vacation day. You need to, you know, see this project through or see this, you know, from my perspective, I was doing marketing campaigns, so I wanted to see a campaign through. And so, you know, of course there's always, you know, things going on. You know, so it's always hard to find a, a time to step away and take a break. But it's really important that people do take their vacation days so they get, don't get burned out and leave. Also, it's really important to make time to really nurture those who are in management positions. We all want to be great leaders, but we're not always taught what to do and how to do it. And so 
what ends up happening is we learn from those who have taught us previously. And if you think about that, that can be kind of scary, especially if you have you know, managers who were totally stressed out and were, weren't, you know, the best communicators. And, you know, so it's really important for, you know, leadership, the executives to really kind of partake and pass down their wisdom uh, to nurture managers into great leaders. Um, and, and, I, and I think a lot of companies, it, this is kind of one of those things that gets, you know, puts on, on the back burner and, and doesn't really you know, get, it's on the to-do list, but it doesn't happen on a regular basis. It, you know, there there might be a management training that happens, you know, once a quarter, once a year, whatever the case might be. But I think it's really important, you know, to have this as something that is an ongoing program, even coming down to almost having a a mentor, even um, pairing up managers with executives, even. Um, I I really just think that 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 can be really powerful um, because a lot of employees, leave a company because of their frontline manager and that relationship. So if you're teaching managers to be better at communication and leadership, then I think that that can only make the relationship with their team stronger and then the and then you know more employees will really feel connected with the company and and feel like they're being heard and taken seriously. So these ideas or options to motivate your employees, just realize that corporate wellness is so much more than this list of ideas. You really need a comprehensive and holistic strategy that addresses numerous factors because these things alone won't keep your employees happy or drive down your costs. So you want to take this list and build on it. Just remember to survey your employees and find out what their ideas are so that you can understand what will actually motivate them from the start. Just avoid making assumptions and then your employees will jump on board and participate without you know, any issues. So if you like these tips, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you want more information, um, I highly recommend checking out my checklist and that covers my four key strategies to corporate wellness. All you have to do is go to virtualcorporatewellness.com backslash four keys. So thank you so much for joining me today. I know your time is valuable, so it means so much that you spent some part of your day with me. I hope these quick tips help and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Talk to you in the next video.